Hey guys, how's it going? My name's The Breath, and welcome to another challenge video. Today, I'm finally asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Emerald's No Poker Center run with only a Mew? This challenge is of course less of a challenge and more of a bit of fun for me, given that this was the second time I've recorded this challenge, and on the second computer too. Yeah, this challenge and working on the Chansey one killed my last laptop, so I've been working on this for a long time and I am so glad that it's finally able to come out to you. Before I say anything else, I do have to give a huge thank you to Plonkerboy900 for in his spare time this week designing a new thumbnail for this video, which I think we can all agree looks 10 times better than anything I'd come up with. Back to this challenge, and Mew of course has a gimmick, and that is why I chose it for the fun run. Mew can learn every move, all the TMs, all the HMs, and even learns Transform by level up. There is nothing that this Pokemon cannot achieve, and that made it the prime candidate to show off here. In terms of stats, Mew is perfectly well rounded, with a base 100 in everything. Well, with everything there said, the only thing to mention now are the rules, and they are easy enough for this one. No poker centers allowed, no bed in the weather institute, no rest house lady, nada. Mew only in battle and no items other than held items naturally. Oh and also, no cheats. I imagine in a challenge like this it could get very tempting to hack in max elixirs and the like, but no, we are going with game mechanics and if that means hours and days of prep work, then so be it. With all of this done, I say let's crack on with the torture. The game begins and we choose the female character, naming ourselves something inventive like Breath. The first thing we do is head to the PC and remove the potion in there. Something is telling me that it will come in handy. Then we go and try to burgle our neighbours, heading upstairs and being confronted by an object on the floor. It looks like a big leather strap with a buckle at each end and a red ball in the middle. Needless to say, we nope the frick out of there, but on the way down we are confronted by the owner of said item, who promptly tells us to go and save his father, or be forced to have it used on us. So we head north to try and save our innocence, but instead we're forced to watch as an old man attempts to procreate with a defenceless animal, which completely destroys our innocence. Inside the briefcase, we get access to our Mew and respectfully put the poor creature out of its misery. We are of course rewarded with our Mew and it totally isn't a bribe to keep us silent from what we've just seen, but either way we decide to give it the nickname Mew Take 2 because this is the second and final attempt at this challenge. From there we head up to fight Brendan which goes absolutely swimmingly. The 69 experience points we gain at the end gets us a much needed level up. Nice. The game is now officially open to us, so what do I decide to do? Well step 1 is to catch 5 Zigzagoon. They'll act as HM slaves and the pickup ability is also going to come in clutch for us. With those five in the party, we head up through Petalburg Woods and arrive at the first Leperberry tree. Leperberries restore 10 power points to a single move, so in effect act identically to an ether. They take 16 hours to plant and to regrow, and if we return every four, we can water them and that grants us a drop of two. So, now comes the prep work. Many days and many hours later and I've harvested enough berries that I'm happy to continue for the moment. We will periodically throughout the challenge have to come back and spend another couple of days waiting for more, but that's why I started this challenge many many days in advance. I managed to get hold of the breath seal of approval on my own stupid idea and that means I'm ready to take on Roxanne. I teach Mew the TM for Bullet Seed here, just to make the job a bit easier as she leads off with Geodude 1, which goes down after the very first Bullet Seed thanks to a critical hit. Geo 2 comes out and a string of two hard hitting bullets does the same job. Her hardest mon to deal with is Nose Pass, that thing just eats seeds for breakfast. Fortunately though, it only required two sets of seeds in order to down it. And just like that, we've claimed the first gym badge without taking any damage. 
With that, we deal with a bloke in a tunnel and head up to meet Mr. Stone. Here we're given a Pokenav and also an automatic heal. I am glad, but those basically don't happen in these games, so I really shouldn't get used to it. Doing this, we sail over to Duford to tackle Brawly. Machop was a pain in the arse. It took longer than I ever would have liked to defeat it, but that's just because of how impatient I am. Defeating it leveled us up and gave us the move Mega Punch. Straight off the bat, it failed to hit, which was just dandy and Meditite sets up a light screen. Obviously, that's useless because one physical attacking punch later, and it's fainted. When Makahita comes out to play and it tanks the hit well, I opt for Pound to get it into range and a single Mega Punch later, we're two badges down. We run through the cave to deliver a little package to Steven before boarding the boat back to Rustborough to tell his father that we've done what he asked. We're rewarded with the EXP share and this is going to be what I use alongside the daycare to train up my pickup slaves to higher levels to hopefully gain more valuable and useful items. Well all of that's done, so where do we go now? Slateport of course, where we come face to face with Archie for the first time. He asks us if we want some candy from his van, so we pepper spray him and he runs away crying like a little bitch. We leave and on the route up to Moorville we bump into Brendan once again. Now I'm an idiot who forgot to save and also forgot to heal, so this is gonna be fun. Quick spoiler, yeah this ain't the last time in this run I forget to do something like that, so keep your eyes out for it. The good news for me is that Brendan did not pose a single threat to us this time and we can run up towards the city. Once in Moorville we bump into Wally and he thinks he can tangle with us, laughable really. A single pound takes that route out and we gain access to the gym. With all polite respect due, Watson can just fucking do one. Our first attempt goes about as well as all of Katie Price's many marriages have, and we just cannot see it through. So I grind, and every grind takes longer than usual because I have a decision to make. I have to decide whether or not to carry on grinding through to struggle and use healing items and pick up. I have to decide whether or not to stop, or I have to decide whether or not to burn through my supply of leper berries and then wait for them to regrow. A mixture of this means that grinding up to level 30 when we learn metronome took far longer than it had any right to. Once in there, I needed luck, and about 20 attempts later, I got this run. Voltorb goes down to a nasty mega punch, and Electric does the exact same. Magneton, the bastard that it is, comes in and Metronome gives us Flame Wheel. The super effective hit took it down in a single strike. That teed us up for an encounter with Electric's big brother, Manetric. I opt again for Metronome and get Strength, dropping it down to half health. We get hit by Static and Synchronize does the same thing back to it. We have a Cherry Berry on which heals us and that causes him to use Thunder Wave next turn and not even hit us. Two Metronomes of Horn Drill and Signal Beam later, the third badge has been defeated and yet another one without taking a single bit of damage. The next major encounter is against Maxi at the pinnacle of the volcano. Despite Intimidate being a thing for us, we defy the odds and get a critical hit first time with Mega Punch to take down Mightyena. Zubat goes down to a single punch and the beast that is camera up. That thing took two before dropping, and I don't think Maxi has ever been so simple. I grab the meteorite out of that machine that Maxi was guarding and head up to Cosmo's house to exchange it for TM27 Return. Next, we only have one viable opponent, Flannery. Her Numble goes down to a single return, which is very swiftly followed by her Slugma in truth. Camera Up survives a return with like one HP, and in anticipation of the heal, I use Bullet Seed. It doesn't do a lot, but it does make return comfortably easy to destroy it next time around. Torkoal just absorbs a return like it was nothing, and eventually Metronome gives us Camouflage, turning us into the normal type. Like the complete pleb that I am, I go for Metronome again and get Meteor Mash as Overheat misses us. 
I keep going for metronome for some idiotic reason, eventually getting sleep powder and sending it off to the land of Nod. I still hadn't realised that return is now also stab for us, and that thought came when I saw no more metronome PP remaining. Two more returns, and now the fourth badge has been claimed by us, and we're halfway there. Norman is up next, and I've levelled up enough to learn Psychic. Spinder doesn't need it though, as it goes down to a single return. Vigoroth does need a few of those as well as he tanks the first and heals up. When Slacking comes out, Psychic does about two thirds health, while he opts to try Counter, which for some reason doesn't work. Another brutal Psychic faints it. Lanoon is out last and like Spinder, that thing cannot tank what we have going towards it. Five badges down and we are well on our way. I now teach Surf to Mew, as it's a powerful water type move and it certainly isn't a waste on the slot. And with that, we head up towards Fortree, being stopped by Brendan for another fight. None of his Lombre, Slugma or Marsh Tomp can really pose a threat to us as we sweep his entire team to the side, paving the way to our next opponent, Flying type leader Winona. Her Swablu goes down to a single Psychic, which is followed out by Tropius. That thing tanks a Psychic better than I would have liked, although it does drain a Hyper Potion. Pelipper is out and that is a Stall King, and uses Protect, but eventually falls. And although Skarmory uses Sand Attack, a couple of Surfs later, and it too goes down. Altaria is last, and a couple of hits later, that is the Six Pack. Speaking of six pack, I think I need to go to the fridge. Our next destination is Mount Pyre, where we find Archie robbing a couple of old people. He sheepishly makes off with a bright red ball and leaves us to go on a wild goose chase. First up is the Magma Hideout and Maxi. He grabs at his blue ball a little bit too hard and busts open its contents all over the room waking Groudon from his sleep and allowing him to escape. In anger, he decides to attack us. Mighty Anna went down after a single surf and Intimidate proved really to be easy to work around. Crobat comes in and goes down after a critical psychic, which definitely wasn't needed, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Camerupt is out last and I'm sure nobody is surprised to hear that it went down as easy as you'd like. Now we go over to Slate Port and watch as Archie makes off with a submarine, tasking us to find him in Lily Cove. Which we do, except he makes off again, so now we're off to Moss Deep to fight Tate and Liza. First things first, I use my newly purchased Thunderbolt TM on Mew and a single shot down Zartu. A bit of back and forth with Lunatone is never nice, and once we get it down to one on one and surf doesn't KO, I'm ready to reset. Somehow, somehow, we tank the psychic on such little health I could barely see the bar, and that also teases us up to down the final mon. This was another one of those stupid moments where I forgot to save at all, so thank god for RNG. After reducing my blood pressure from those events, we head where it's better, down where it's wetter, under the sea, to have Archie attack us. His attack is pretty much the same as Maxi's. Surf on Mightyena, Psychic on Crobat, and the only exception being that we one-shot Sharpedo with Thunderbolt. After this failure, he then proceeds to fumble around and accidentally release the second super ancient being, Kyogre, using all of his 200 IQ in the process. We are very clearly warned by Steven on the outside not to do anything stupid and instantly we proceed to do something stupid, like go to the epicenter of a storm and watch a couple of beasts battle it out for supremacy. After the punishment of a brutally long walk, we're shoved into a cave where we meet Wallace, who drags us up the sky pillar to awaken a giant lizard creature that leads into my all-time favourite cutscene. Just for a treat, I'll play it for you. So sit tight and watch this.
Well, wasn't that a nice break from my dulcet tones? I'm sorry guys, but I'm back now. With that work of art done, we head inside the gym and challenge one. Love Disc is out first and being water type and somewhat weak, a single thunderbolt was all that was needed. The big bad Crawdaunt comes out and I was actually expecting more from it in truth, as it also cannot survive a single thunderbolt. Whiskash comes in third and being part ground type, we switch to using return. Celio comes out with that completed and a single critical thunderbolt dispatches it. Kingdra is the last member of the gym leader's challenge and although it used double team, it doesn't make a difference as the psychic we use hits and that is officially the final gym badge claimed. With that done, we make our way to Victory Road in the final stretch now. But first, we have to fight Wally. As Wigo proved when he ran through Gen 3 as Wally, he has a pretty decent team. Unfortunately for the real Wally, he doesn't know how to utilise it as well and ultimately fails to halt our advance. Definitely check out that Zwigo video by the way, link is in the description. I have a number of rare candies from my pickup slaves at this point and after the trek through Victory Road I decide to use a few and grind up the last level. Why last? Because we step through to fight Sydney, now at level 69. Nice. My Tiena comes out first, and like the last few goes down to Surf. Shiftry might be shifty, but his double team couldn't protect him from two returns, and Cacturn in a similar fashion might lower my speed, but it fails to save its health bar. Crawdaunt is no worse than Juan's and goes down to Thunderbolt, and Absol? Well, Absol goes down to a single critical return. If I'm correct, I'd say that's the first Elite Four member down, and I didn't take any damage. Phoebe is second, and I hate this fight. I always hate this fight. Dusclops wasn't an issue outside of Protect, as Psychic sends it away. Bennett was somehow able to survive a Surf, but the second time around, we prove it was just a bad damage roll and take it out also. The second one learned from the mistakes of the first and doesn't try to resist. The second Dusclops, however, clearly didn't get the memo because it manages to hit us with a nasty Shadow Ball. Ultimately though, it really wasn't too much to handle. Sableye drowns in a single surf to make it 2 out of 5 done for this stretch. Third is Glacier and her Celio leads, but not for too long. Thunderbolt deals with it and Glalie emerges. I experiment first with Thunderbolt and Surf, but ultimately settle on Return. The second one that comes out gets the exact same treatment and tees up the second Celio. One Thunderbolt later, Big Bad Daddy Wall Rain emerges, however it doesn't have the capabilities to survive a Thunderbolt either. Last in the Elite Four is Drake, and if anyone had me scared it was actually him. I do have Ice Beam in the bag, but I don't want to use it. Two returns deal with the Shellgon that comes out, and Flygon manages to survive a couple of Surfs thanks to healing, as he switches out into Salamence. I deliver it a brutal Psychic, which knocks it out, and Flygon obviously doesn't stay long after that. Altaria manages to heal after a nasty Psychic, but the special defense drop sealed its fate. I opt for Thunderbolt on Kingdra and get the Paralysis too. He is fully paralysed and that means a second hit finishes off the last member. Only the champion awaits now, Wallace the water type user. He leads off with a Wailord and we hit a Thunderbolt that proves to be far too strong, knocking it down. Tentacruel emerges and a stab super effective psychic hits harder than I thought Thunderbolt could and I proved to be right there. Udicolo emerges and I was really hoping for paralysis but alas it just wasn't to be. Half health wasn't bad though and I opted to finish off with psychic. A critical hitting return takes Whiskash down to a minuscule slither of health. It heals and two returns knock the lucky fish out of the park. 
Gyarados is four times weak to Thunderbolt, so I guess we all know how that one worked out. When Milotic comes out, Thunderbolt doesn't do anywhere near as much as I would have liked it to, but when he hits me with a Toxic, it reflects thanks to Synchronize, and a single Thunderbolt later, Bob's your uncle. We are champions of the region. The question now is whether or not we can beat the post-game fight with Steven. In truth, it's actually more of a how hard is it to beat the post-game fight with Steven. I know from my last run that anything under level 81 is pretty much impossible, or at least very hard. Although that is with the stipulation of I'm not using cheese moves like Double Team. I use some more rare candies and do a little grind up to level 82 when we kick it off. Skarmory starts us off and survives a flamethrower. It heals and a second one is a critical hit, knocking it down. Credilly comes out and Psychic hits hard, but not hard enough. We get confused and manage to pull through to hit it with another one. I pull through confusion yet again to hit a brutal flamethrower on Metagross, also getting the burn. That burn saved us from the incoming Shadow Ball, and the berry healing means another flamethrower takes it down too. We overcome confusion yet again, and Surf hits a nasty chunk on Claydol. We repeat that measure again, and ultimately a critical Surf gets rid of it. Penultimate is Agron, and given how weak it is to water, a single Surf does the job nicely. The final member of his team, and the final Pokemon for this challenge is one that brings weight to my chest, Armaldo. A single surf gets rid of him, RIP brother. With that, this challenge is complete. At the start of this challenge, I asked a simple question. Can you beat Pokemon Emerald's no Poké Center run with only a Mew? The answer is obviously yes. Yes, you can. Like I said, this was supposed to just be a bit of fun, and I apologize for the shaky quality. I'm still getting used to the new bit of kit, and it should only improve with time. Right, thank you all so much for watching, like and subscribe for more content like this, and comment down below any challenges you might like to see me take on in the future. I've got really sadistic plans for the next few videos, and I cannot wait to bring those ones to you. So with that said, please join me next time where I ask the question, can you beat Pokemon Black 2 with only a happening? Yes, I'm looking forward to that one as it'll actually be my first time playing those games. So hopefully it should be a bit of fun and also a hard one. I look forward to seeing you all for that in the next one.